our heartfulness way of practices mainly three elements meditation cleaning and prayer how does meditation change our or impact us at a cellular level not too long ago i met a very nice doctor dr raj pandya from atlanta he was talking of what if there is absolute relaxation at a cellular level and the same morning something extraordinary happened it's hilarious because we were just sitting in in formal setting and at the periphery of this people who were seated around the sofa and chairs there was one sister from iran she was standing with somebody else there were a few people who were already standing and hilarious laughter you know that was the moment and then i was continuously working and transmitting at the same time because that's the best moment to work when people are laughing and giggling <laughs> there is no resistance as the transmission was flowing she particularly she was so sensitive her entire body felt so much of relaxation it's almost like paralyzed body and she just fell on the floor <laughs> down and that she goes all were worried and fortunately there was one doctor behind her who looked after her but i was smiling see nothing wrong is going to happen because i was confident why this was happening so we have to find out first of all body markers physiological what really changes at a mitochondrial level at a cell membrane level and neurologically what sort of neurotransmitters are being affected what enzymes are affected for example uh, when our circadian rhythm is disturbed first thing that happens is uh, impact on our sleep and this impact on our sleep creates many other problems as as a result it's like a cascading impact of it during our sleep what really happens is the you know generally we have lymphatic system up to here in the brain it's different it's called lymphatic system and through this lymphatic system a lot of exchange happens especially all the toxins gets removed during our sleep you know the brain is the most expensive real estate that we have so nature decided not to put lymphatic system there and overload it otherwise your head would have been like this like ravan see so nature designed a very special drainage system glymphatic system so these glial cells they become very active and there is a protein you know that's really it's a marker there it gets secreted and goes out now what triggers this you know this there are a lot of proteins that gets also synthesized when we don't sleep it forms some sort of a coating around the cells there we can measure that but you have to kill the person so you can't go in <laughs> and study so we have to depend on these markers so when we do the cleaning evening cleaning process something like that happens toxins they are not built up at all so what are you going to remove 
when you do your evening cleaning there is no built up of it so what happens now this glial system doesn't have to work so hard to remove because first of all you are preventing the toxins from formation so we can study this that's number one number two impact of meditation when we meditate slowly and slowly what happens the alpha waves or gamma waves it slows down you know those of you who are on economics instead of science let me explain to you what this wave pattern is in our brain <clears throat> What happens to you when you are so quiet? Not many thoughts arise in your head. When you're disturbed, many thoughts arise. Okay. Children, especially the very young ones, their brain activity is very fast. Because their thought patterns are also very fast. They think very fast. And because of this thinking, thinking, you can say, during this process, there is a lot of firing inside between synapses. It creates electrical impulses. Right? This electrical impulses creates magnetic field. Both electrical and magnetic field can be measured. If you are thinking fast, this electric field, electromagnetic field, be, field will be very intense and fast. Okay, so that can be measured on electroencephalograph, EEG. Okay, if you keep a patient or a subject for experimentation in fMRI, or just put those probes on your head and see what's going on. Your waking hours had certain level of frequencies, so you can measure that. In deep sleep, you have certain level that also can be measured. It slows down, and in deep sleep state, you have three to four hertz per second, very little. Now, when we are just like this, when we are meditating, at the end of it, if you measure, it will also be like three to four hertz per second. But you are not sleeping. Only you were sleeping, that's all. Right. It does, I mean, it really happens. Some volunteers, they don't get sleep. So meditation is the only way to rest. And that's better, actually. I don't mind if you go to sleep. It really doesn't matter. It's not that you lost anything. You have rested very well. So, in this deep meditative state, it mimics deep sleep state. Only difference is, in deep sleep you are not aware. In meditative, uh, in a deep meditative state, you are aware. That's the only difference. But that's the beauty of it. That's in our yoga sastras, it's known as fourth level of consciousness. That can also be measured. Some researchers they had done the study on Buddhist monks, those who have practiced for twenty thousand hours, thirty thousand hours, aggregate meditation on the, in their life. They were able to go into delta wave very fast. But with heartfulness wave of meditation, the very first session will put you in delta. And that's all because of pranahuti, this yogic transmission we talk about. Markers like Cortisol, for example, saliva test. What else? The white matter in a meditative mind will be more dense, 
than the non-meditative brains. The aging process will also be reduced considerably if you take two twins, for, for example, twins, one meditating, another not meditating, identical twins, you will see the difference immediately. So, the, but all these studies, they have, we have to prove it scientifically. That's all. You know, there was a time, Galileo's time, see, science was against the religion. Because Christianity believed that, you know, sun is rotating around the earth. It's written in the Bible. And when Galileo started saying that, no, it's not true, it's the earth that rotates around the sun, they were up in arms and they poisoned him. They killed him. Today, science is against the religion. Revenge time, see. <laughs> so now we have to prove many rituals that we do, why we do what we do. We need to prove all those things scientifically. And only then the scientific mind will believe. And we also, though we have so much of confidence in meditation, Oh, we become so happy when we see, oh wow, meditation, it changed my, what we call, heart rate variability. It changed my uh, certain state of mind, I improved my sleep. How did that happen? We become so happy about it. See? But how can you prove things like you're going into a state, transcending time, and space. Now let me ask you one question, and this is going to give you perhaps a good migraine. <laughs> when Lord Krishna says, I am time, right? And through yogic practice, in Samadhi, when we say, I transcend time, are you transcending Lord Krishna now? 